Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. We have a cubed plus b cubed divided by a minus b, and that is equal to c squared, and a, b, c are all integers. But guess what? We're not necessarily looking for solutions, but we're looking for the number of integer solutions. Since it's a Diophantine equation, the solutions are supposed to be integers. Otherwise, you could probably find infinitely many values of ABC that satisfy this equation, right? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Since we don't have to solve or find all solutions, uh, we're in good shape, and we can experiment. What is, what is that supposed to mean? Since ABC are integers, we can look at some particular values, see if they satisfy the equation. But one thing to keep in um, perspective or just note is that the denominator cannot be zero. In other words, uh, a and b should not be equal, right? If a minus b does not equal zero, that implies a does not equal b. So a and b have to be different. Good, that gives us a direction. Plus, the second thing we need to be careful about is, can the numerator be zero? And that's actually a good thing, you know why? Because if the numerator is zero, then c squared becomes zero, and that's kind of like a trivial solution. Yes, it's trivial, but it still counts. But does that help us with finding how many? Probably not, but it's worth looking into. So suppose c is equal to zero, and this implies a cubed plus b cubed is equal to zero. And then from here, we can safely say that a cubed is equal to negative b cubed, and then if you cube root both sides, you're going to get a equals negative b. You cannot square root a negative number, but you can cube root a negative number. That's the good thing about odd powers. They're odd, but also they are interesting. So what does that mean? It means that c equals 0 gives us a equals negative b. Does that work at all? I mean, think about it. For example, if a and b are opposites, sort of, right? In other words, their sum is zero. Their difference is not going to be zero, which is a good thing. Maybe we can just make up some values, such as suppose b is equal to 1. And this, well, I want to use something besides 1. Maybe how about b is equal to 3? This implies a is equal to negative 3 because a is the opposite of b, as you can see here. And let's go ahead and plug it into our equation. a cubed plus b cubed divided by a minus b. And here we're going to get a cubed, which is negative 27 b cubed is 27 divided by negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6. And this is 0 divided by negative 6, which is 0, which is equal to c squared, which means c is equal to 0. Awesome. We got a triple that works, like negative 3, comma 3, comma 0. Hmm. Wait a minute. Is that the only way this will work? So, here's the thing. If c does not equal 0... We know one thing, that c squared is greater than 0, right? c squared is greater than 0 if c does not equal 0. We've already looked at c equals 0, though. Let's go ahead and look at this next. So this expression needs to be greater than 0. So let's go ahead and write it down. a cubed plus b cubed divided by a minus b is greater than 0. What is that supposed to mean? That means that... A is greater than B, maybe? Hmm, that's a good question. If A is greater than B, then A minus B becomes positive, but does that guarantee that A cubed plus B cubed is also positive? For example, can A be something like uh, negative 4, and B can be a 2? So the sum of their cubes will be negative. So that's not always guaranteed. So that's kind of problematic, don't you think? Unless you're looking for positive solutions. But we're looking for, well, we might look for positive solutions as well. Because again, at the end, the idea is to find the number of solutions. So let's go ahead and experiment with some positive numbers. Okay? And again, writing the equation in the original form, it looks like this. Sorry, I kind of cheated there. And now we're going to take this into consideration. And we're, we're going to experiment. Such as, suppose A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 1. Notice that. I do not want A and B to be equal. That's not a good thing, right? So if you plug them in, 
a cubed 8 plus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. That's equal to 9 over 1, which is 9, which is c squared. Uh-oh, Houston, we got a solution, which is c is equal to 3, not 0. Great. So that gives us a triple. And again, I'm focusing on positives. Otherwise, c can also be negative 3. That doesn't matter much because, again, we're looking for the number of solutions. But that gave us a solution. Does that guarantee there's going to be more? No, you never know. So we're going to continue experimenting until we get something meaningful. Okay? And I'll show you in a little bit what that means. If A is equal to 4, this time I'm kind of increasing the A, and B, suppose A is equal to 4 and B is equal to 2, then from here we're going to get A cubed, which is 64, plus B cubed, which is 8, divided by a minus b, which is 4 minus 2. That's great because the numerator is even. So that's 72 divided by 2, which is equal to 36. And that can equal c squared because c squared is a perfect square. And 36 is a perfect square. That's just perfect, right? So that gave us this solution. Great. Another triple, right? But again, we need to keep checking. Let's try to find something that doesn't work. a equals 3. B equals 1. Okay, ready? If A is equal to 3, then it's going to be 27 plus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. This is 28 divided by 2, which is equal to 14. Uh-oh, 14 is not a perfect square. It does not work. So these values are not going to work. We don't get a solution. Too bad. Let's go ahead and check the next thing. How about A equals 3 and B equals 2? From here, we get 27 plus 8 divided by 3 minus 2, which is a good thing because this is going to be 1. That's 35. Uh-oh, that is not a perfect square either. So these two values are not going to work either. Okay, how about the next one? Like, let's jump to 8. And A equals 8 and B equals 4. 8 cubed is equal to 512. B cubed is equal to 64 divided by 8 minus 4. This is 576 divided by 4. And that should be 144. Another perfect square. Yay. So this works as well. I'm just going to take the positive value, of course. Notice that we get a bunch of solutions that work and some solutions that don't work. So what is going on here? What's the difference? If you look at the A, B, C values, and if you pay attention to particular values that I picked, the ones that particularly ones that don't work, these two, Notice that A is 3 in those cases, but when they do work, A is 2, 4, or 8. Look at the B values, 1, 2, 4. What does that tell you? Hmm. So A and B look like the ratio between them is kind of 2 to 1. 2 to 1, 4 to 2, 8 to 4. Hmm. But not only that, also they are powers of 2, which makes sense if one of them is a power of 2, right? In other words, you're like, hmm. Interesting. If a is equal to 2 to the power n plus 1 and b is equal to 2 to the power n, and again, remember our original expression, a cubed plus b cubed divided by a minus b, I'm going to go ahead and replace a with this. Let's cube it. And then b with this. Let's cube it. And divide it by 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 2 to the power n. Let's simplify this a little bit, shall we? This is going to be 2 to the power 3n plus 3 plus 2 to the power 3n divide by 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 2 to the power n. Obviously, we can factor out 2 to the power 3n. That will give us 2 to the power 3 plus 1. And denominator, we can take out a 2 to the n. That will give us 2 to the 1 minus 1. Or you can just write it as 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, so forget about it. And this is 9. And guess what? This is the best part. This actual expression becomes 2 to the power 2n times 9. And... This is supposed to equal a cubed plus b cubed divided by a minus but At the same time, it's supposed to equal c squared. Beautiful. You know why? Because this is a perfect square. It's just perfect. Everything is awesome. Yay. So from here, c becomes 3 times 2 to the power n. So if a is equal to 2 to the power n plus 1 and b is equal to 2 to the power n, then c becomes this. Therefore, we got a triple that works all the time as long as n is an integer. Does that work for negative integers? That's for you to check out. But this brings us to the end of this video. But what's the conclusion? There are infinitely many solutions because as you change the values of n, you're going to get more and more solutions. And guess what? This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.
Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.